Hello and welcome to Learn Elixir Week 1, Module 2. Today we're going to be going over why Elixir is poised for the future and why it's a good choice to use Elixir for your next project or even for your current project. Elixir is very scalable and has been very battle tested in Erlang, which has been around since 1986, which is a fairly long time. Elixir systems are often very fault tolerant, have high uptime, and yes, that's 99.9999999% or 99 with seven nines after it percent of uptime reliability. They're able to give this reliability if the programs are structured in the proper way. Of course, if you structure your programs wrong, then you're not going to have this much uptime and in fact your numbers will be quite a bit less. One of the good parts about Elixir is even though it's built on Erlang, which has been battle tested, it has all the syntactical sugar of a new language. Elixir was created in 2011, which means it's fairly new and has a lot of the niceties that we come to expect with new languages. Its syntax is also very similar to Ruby, which really helps to learn and grasp it since Ruby has been praised for its easy syntax and easy developer usage. The parts where Ruby doesn't shine so well is in performance and scalability, which is really what Elixir fixes. Elixir is almost like a scalable, faster version of Ruby although there's quite a bit of differences once you really start digging into it. If you're coming from Ruby, then you probably already know Rails, and in which case Phoenix is the equivalent of Rails for Elixir, and it provides so much similarity between the two. Another reason to choose Elixir is its polyglot ability. Being able to use whatever language you want while still calling it from Elixir is one of Elixir's strong points, and that's one of the things that makes it such a good language for the future, because if you need to export to another language, say you're doing machine learning and you want to call Python, or say you're doing string processing like HTML parsing and Elixir is just not fast enough for you, you have the ability to call those other languages directly from Elixir without it looking like you're actually using another language after it's been set up. This means that everyone can use your library or whatever you're creating as if it was native Elixir code and you don't even realize that you're actually calling something else different. A great example of this is the library Flocky. Flocky is an HTML parser, which is written in Elixir. Although for performance, they have a module that you can swap to in the config that switches everything to Rust. The only config change is a simple one-line change, and other than that, you have to change no code between using Elixir for processing or Rust. This is a great example of how Elixir is used and can be used to polyglot with different languages. One of my favorite reasons to use Elixir as well is the amazing frameworks that they have for the database and for creating web applications or APIs. Ecto is the application that is used for handling database management and is a data mapper, which is similar to an ORM but has a few differences we'll go over when we get there. It's an amazing and well-maintained library that Elixir is dedicated to maintaining, and the same stands for Phoenix, which is what we use to create web apps or APIs. Phoenix is very similar to Rails and has almost the exact same syntax and flow of code. As we said before, Elixir has a really good ability to choose between different languages to use and call them as if it was still native Elixir code. There's three types of functions in Elixir, BIFs, NIFs, and user implemented functions. BIF stands for, BIF stands for built-in functions and are functions that are actually created in C. Typically, you're never going to see one of these functions since they're really only in the Erlang source code for when they export certain processes and tasks to C, when it's actually a lot faster. The thing you'll see more commonly is NIFS. NIF stands for Native Implemented Function and is a function that is in C or C++ that you can call as if it was native Elixir code. This doesn't necessarily mean it can only be in C or C++ since you can actually use that to call other languages. Rustler is an example of this, which is actually a library that is used to call Rust, the programming language, as if it was native implemented code. You can't actually tell when you're using a NIF because it looks exactly like Elixir code. Flocky does this, and it actually uses Rustler underneath the hood. The other thing that Elixir provides is a concept of ports. Ports can be used to communicate with different things such as languages or servers, or even bash tasks. If you want to run a bash task, you can actually use a port and listen for any output that it provides. You can do the same with pretty much any programming language and call it directly using a port and even get some monitoring on it so that you can add it to your supervisor tree. We'll go over this more further into the course. 
So to clarify, the reasons we choose Elixir are because scalability is a first-class citizen in terms that it's always being thought of, and the language itself provides great tools to deal with scalability, providing even the most in-depth monitoring tools, tracing tools, and a whole swath loads of other tools that help us debug and handle production running apps. We'll go over all of these tools in the course and what the benefits and advantages are of each and one of them. One of the cool things that you can do directly with Elixir's command line is actually profile different functions and see how many times they're being called and how long each step of that function is taking. That allows you to identify bottlenecks very quickly and is actually built into the default Elixir mix task. These tasks are mixprofile.eprof, .cprof, and .fprof. We'll go over what each of these do and how to use them in future videos. The other thing that's amazing about Elixir is that we talked about is the usage of other languages that can communicate back to it. So being able to use other languages that return results to Elixir directly. Some of the other reasons that Elixir is amazing and I think it's really beneficial for the future and scalability is the ability to be horizontally scalable, which means adding machines to achieve higher scale, and for its scalable and tunable VM. The Beam VM is naturally super scalable, Although the default options sometimes need tuning, we can tune all of those options to push the performance of a single node. An amazing example of this is when Phoenix, the web server, used a single node to maintain 2 million concurrent connections. While other languages have incredible struggles with this, Node, for example, has a completely separate library that's run and maintained and is only able to obtain around 200,000 concurrent connections. This is the end of Module 2, and I'll see you in Module 3.